Okay, I am so excited for today's video. I just picked up the HP Omnibook and this laptop is supercharged with Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. Now you might remember a while ago, I got to go to the Windows Developer Conference and it was there that I was learning all about Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite and how it is really revolutionizing, that might sound dramatic, but once we dive into it, you will understand it really is, the way we built. So I was super excited when I finally picked up this Omnibook to start building with it. Now for today, we are going to be building a Python project specifically that will test us with our language learning skills. Now, this project, this logic anyways for the project can really be applied to many different applications. Essentially, it's a simple app that will quiz us, you know, how can you say hello in Mandarin? How do you say how are you? So it's a very simple Python app. The main purpose though, through going through this process is really being able to run a model locally, which I'm so excited about. Showing that process, showing how to get started up and running and with this model that we use, which I'll share with you in a bit here, it will then share with us the code to create this quizzing application using Python. And in this case, for me, I'm going to be doing it with Mandarin. If you've been around for a while, you know I used to study Mandarin. I used to live in Hong Kong for quite a while. And it's something that I've always wanted to be able to master and I never have. And I've fallen off for a few years learning it. So this is going to kickstart my learning progress. But before we get into the code, let's go through a little bit of specs around Snapdragon X Elite and why it is such a big deal. First off is it allows us to run Gen AI LLM models that are over 13 billion parameters on device locally at extremely high speeds. And I can attest to this because I was already playing around with it. Another big thing is they have updated their micro NPU inside the Qualcomm sensing hub for better privacy, security, and user experience. And they support Windows Studio effects to make AI accelerated applications and experiences. It's really exciting. Okay, taking a step back from the AI side of things, let's look at the processor itself. I mean, it's a game changer in many ways too. So first up, I have to address battery life, which is incredible. And if you've seen reviews on this already, you, I mean, every review I've watched, it, it, they're raving about the battery life. So I had to test it out, which wasn't hard for me because I always forget to plug uh, devices in and you know, I'll be traveling a lot and then I realize things are dead. So I got to test this out just by being Tiff by forgetting to always plug devices in. And I can tell you the battery life is truly incredible. OLED devices will get the 12 plus hours of battery life. And LCD models can stretch to around about 20 plus hours, which is incredible. Especially if you're like me and often forget to do the important things like charge your devices until you need them. Now, something I have to bring up because I have spent so many hours so much time on different computers and this is not the case. It is cool. Not just cool in appearance, but the actual computer itself is cool and it's quiet as you are building, which is almost unheard of lately, I feel like. So I'm very excited about that. All right, before we jump into it though, one more thing I really wanna cover here, which is NPUs. And if you are not super familiar with neutral processing units, let's talk a little bit about why they are so important and have such a big impact on the way we build. First up is improved performance. MPUs are optimized for machine learning, artificial intelligence tasks, and they can perform these tasks much faster than general purpose CPUs or even in cases, GPUs. And oftentimes they are energy efficient. I mean, I was just sharing about battery life. They are designed to handle AI workloads more efficiently without consuming all of the power. And as we're going to be going through today, there's a lot of on-device features, which is super cool. As we'll dive into it, one of the things that stands out to me is as we start running our models locally on our computer, it's really interesting to me thinking of different use cases, especially, you know, for example, say you want to run some models or interact with some chatbots on an airplane. I mean, there's sometimes Wi-Fi, but it's usually really terrible. Now you can just run it on device. You do not need to be connected to Wi-Fi, which is a really big deal. Actually, speaking of which, I'm not even, I, I, this never happens, but today I've had the worst Wi-Fi. Uh, it seems to be working now, but it took me a long time to set up and get everything ready for this. So we might be testing this in real time today. I don't even know. All right, now let's get building. Okay, you can see on screen here, I have LM Studio open. It's lmstudio.ai, so make sure to start by going to that. Now, as I mentioned, I am on a Windows right now, but if you are, say, on a Mac or um, any other device, select what is right for you. Now, before we download it, well, I already have it downloaded, but if you want right now is a good time to start downloading it, and let's go over exactly what is LM Studio. It's really cool. Now it says down here with LM Studio, you can run LLMs on your laptop entirely offline, which we are gonna do today, which I'm very excited about. 
use models through the in-app chat UI or an open AI compatible local server. This is really cool. We'll play around with this as well. Download any uh, compatible model files from Hugging Face and discover new and noteworthy LLMs in the app's homepage. This is pretty exciting. I have been playing around with this for a while. It's really easy to start using. So first thing you're going to do is download it. Afterwards, once you have it downloaded and installed, let's open it up. Okay, we're not gonna get to the good stuff yet. One sec here, let's go to home. Now here in LM Studio, you can see, you can really search up any type of model you want. I mean, when we're looking down here, you can see there's 5.3 Mini, there's um, DeepMind, Stability AI. I mean, yeah, every single model. It's really, really cool. For this one though, we are going to use Code Llama. Now to start with, search it up, click on Go. And you will see here that there is a lot of different options uh, for what you want to install. For this one, I installed Code Llama uh, 13 billion parameters, this one here, which by the way, as we mentioned in the intro, Snapdragon X Elite allows us to start using, which is really exciting. So this is what I downloaded, uh, Code Llama 13 billion parameters. Once you have downloaded your selected model, here's what you need to do next. Go to this next tab, which is AI Chat. This is so easy to use, it's really cool. Give me a sec here. Let's eject this model. We're going to start fresh. So let's do new chat. Chat with a large language model. This is a really great way if, as I mentioned, I think in the intro, if you are say on an airplane or maybe in your computer working offline, you can start immediately interacting with different models based on what you want to do. Now, the reason we chose Code Llama is because we are going to be using that to prompt it to give us some code to write that Python script that will help quiz us for Mandarin. Now here, once you have the model downloaded, you can click on the top where it says select a model to load. And in this case, of course, we just have a code llama instruct. So let's click on that. Loading model. There we go. We can see here 13 billion parameters. Start chatting. So what I did to start with is let's just start with hi. Now it might take a little bit longer to respond back because as I mentioned, we are running this locally. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Now this is a very specific code based model. So, you know, although I think it can give us some answers outside of the context of coding, it's not what it's meant or intended to do. So for this one, I, let's start with create for me a Python script that will quiz me on my Quiz me on Mandarin, on the langu Mandarin language. Let's be a bit specific here. Let's say, prompt me with a question and then I will type in the answer. If I get it wrong, let me guess again until I get the answer correct. Yeah, I think that's good, right? Okay, you can see it gave us response back. It, this is what it was doing in my last chat with it as well. It was going to give a list of questions around China, not specific to uh, learning the programming or this is, you can tell you're talking to a developer when the first thing I think of is programming languages versus actual languages we're learning. But let me go to this last chat I had with it because this one was the one where I prompted it a bit better. There was some iffiness going on. It kept on talking about background music. I've never said I wanted background music for this. So it's not, this model isn't perfect by any means, but it did give me much better code, which we will run in a sec here. But you can see the purpose of this is that it is giving you code. So here we go. How would you say hello in Mandarin? How would you say goodbye in Mandarin? Now it's giving us the answers in the Mandarin uh, characters, which I'm not at that level of learning. So I'm gonna have to manually change that just to Mandarin in text format. The other cool thing you can do though, before we run this code in VS Code, let's go to local server. This is really interesting. Now I've just been tinkering around with this. I am not an expert in this tab by any means, but it shows when you run your server here, it will show different endpoints that you can then play around with. And I think this is really cool because what it does, you can see here, it says start a local HTTP server that mimics select OpenAI API endpoints. So that's pretty cool. Let's do that. So it's localhost 1234-v1 slash models. Okay, let's go into here, local host 1234 slash v1 slash local models. Is that what it was? Models, okay. 
there we go. Isn't that cool? So now you can see that we, yes, we've installed Code Llama model owned by, this is really cool. And then actually from here, um, you can also see if we go back into LM Studio, oh, 200 anyway, there's an error. But this is a really cool way if you wanted to more so play around with running it locally and playing around with different endpoints. You can see here, supported endpoints, V1 chat completions, V1 embeddings. It's really cool. This whole system is very cool. My models, you can see. Maybe I'm late to the game. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, Tiff, I've been playing around with LM Studio for so long. But I haven't, because I just got this computer and this is my first time really diving into LM Studio, running models locally on with more power, if you will, which is really exciting. Okay, so I took the code from my previous chat I had with the Code Llama. Uh, I feel like it was giving me better results, even with similar prompts. So this is the code it generated. I did add a few more Mandarin words, which you can see here. And what this essentially will do is it will uh, prompt us to say, to guess the English version of the Mandarin word. So let's go ahead, it's a very simple code. As always though, just as a reminder, I mean, I say this in any video where we are building something, but this code is taken from a model. So make sure you know what it is doing before you run anything and ensure if you are maybe newer builder that you are building things on your own. Well, I mean, at any stage, but this is just more so the purpose of this is not necessarily to learn how to build this program, although we just did and it's extremely simple, but more so how to interact with models locally and what that can benefit or how we can benefit from that. Let's go ahead and see how, how good we are. Come on, right click, run Python, Python in terminal. Okay, what does it mean in English? Oh, okay, wait, I gotta, I gotta scroll up a bit. I don't see the answers. Okay, I saw this one, it's cold, let's test it out. Hot, hot, opposite. I don't know. Let's try, um, thank you. I know that's not thank you, but let's just see what it says. What does paying you mean? Mm, I forget this one too, this is how bad I am. Um, forgot, I forgot. What is ma, mom, right? Oh, and then you can see quiz finish, you got two out of five correct. This is really fun though. You can see how we can maybe say, introduce Pi games so we can have a more interesting UI to this. Uh, maybe use an API to quiz us on other words. It's pretty cool. All right, I will ensure I link the uh, GitHub repository for this down below, although the code is very simple. But there's a lot we could build upon to this. Let me know what else we should build. Let me know what other models we should build with. Comment that in the, leave that in the comments. All right, that was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. When you start really thinking of, through this video, we covered a lot of the basics, the foundation of what is possible with this, but there is so much more we can build and uncover, and we are going to continue building with this, continue finding different models to run and build with. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Make sure to go check out the Snapdragon X Elite. I linked it down below, and as a little bit of a side note, if you are a builder, even if you are someone looking for a job or growing your career, building with this, I would say, is such a great way to stand out because you're building with the best and the latest and greatest technologies. So it's another great conversation starter. All right, that's all for today. I'll see you all next time. Thanks everyone.